Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I am your host, Robin Norgren, and I am here to share some musings from a monk, a modern day monk. His name is Jeremy Driscoll, and he wrote a book called The Monk's Alphabet. And he takes some um, various words from A to Z and offers his take on it from the lens of a contemporary monk living in a, a monastery. Uh, the uh, monastery that he resides in is Mount Angel Abbey in St. Benedict, Oregon. We are on B. B is for breathless. I'm in Paris. And I saw a splendid French classic film this afternoon, Jean-Luc Goddard's About de Souffle, or in English, Breathless. Made in 1959, filmed in Paris on the streets we pass. It seems primitively made by today's standards, but that precisely is its force. It has the feel of Hitchcock from the same period, at least in as far as the camera is so well used, always speaking by its unexpected angles and many overdrawn scenes. You still feel cinema as a genre of art and not merely as it is so often now, simply a technical wonder. Ghislaine says that all of Goddard's films treat the theme of our inability to love Breathless is certainly about that. A totally cool gangster is betrayed by a New York girl come to Paris, and he truly loves her in his own way. She experiments shamefully with him, and in the end, he dies for it. His last words are directed to her. You're a lousy bitch. Then he reaches up, closes his eyes, and dies. B is for bugs. My room, with its open windows, is filling with ladybugs and potato bugs. I don't mind, though I wish there were not so many. Yet they are quiet and seem clean, unlike the annoying and now sluggish flies, every one of which I would gladly kill. This October afternoon is magnificent. The air is clear and warm. The sun on the valley discloses a miracle of colors. Scores of kinds of greens and fields and trees. Marvelous ranges of browns and other fields and in the changing leaves. Yellows and oranges and reds in others of the leaves. Even a great patch of black in a nearby field burned yesterday. Why does this vision not calm me and give me peace? I think because it is all passing, and even now for the most part is unseen. And even if seen, so what? What does it mean? The bugs are coming into my room because they know that soon it will be too cold for them. It won't be long. We needn't wait till winter. The autumn cold will annihilate them. And here, with me, they will last a little longer. But again, so what? It is no wonder we have constructed ways of living that make us insensitive to all that is around us, including one another. Who can absorb this much much mystery? Who can bear its burden? A thousand years ago, 10,000 years ago, there would have been a bright afternoon like today's in this season of the year. Bugs swarming, panicked at the coming cold. What were those days then? What is this day now? B is for Burgundy. Splendid countryside, hold and very still under the hot sun. On the bus, I was looking at the land, admiring it, and thinking about Christ. Did I feel his presence? Perhaps. Something filled me briefly between my thoughts and the vision of the land. Perhaps it was he. In any case, it was something very big, elusive, wide like the land, 
textured like the land, peaceful like my thoughts. I wanted to talk to him directly, to say things to him and interiorly to be sure of his response. But there was none of that. Yet perhaps all that was Christ, ever so much bigger than my small, what I have to say to him and what I wish he would say back. Childhood. This morning at Vigils, the Feast of the Holy Innocents, December 28th, we read a homily from John Henry Newman, where he was speaking about the nature of childhood innocence and the process whereby we lose it. At one point he spoke of what we once were, i.e. children, as an intimation of what God will make us in the kingdom of heaven. This is an amazing thought, bigger than what it means on first impact. I am accustomed to think of time passing as time in which I should be growing toward what I will be. And there is some clear sense in which this is true. But Newman gets at another level of the question here. His suggestion helps me to intuit, to detect in me, a someone I once already was as a part of what I am becoming. Even if I never was that someone completely, I have already touched it, already been that. It is, I catch a glimpse in flashes, being that person that God would have intended me to be before the fall. His idea of me before the history of sin begins to kick in and have its actual effects on my life. I think of Joe T. and Keenan E., two seven-year-old boys, so excited and pure as I helped them prepare for their first communion. I was standing at the altar with them and explaining different things about the Mass, telling them deep things, boldly, that adults would have understood with difficulty. Suddenly, Joe shuddered and exclaimed, How do you know these things? Then I think of Nick's, of John N., 16, who used to have the same innocence, but is now losing it. He recently told me, sullen and accepting, It used to be that God was always there, that I felt his presence always. Then one day, it all went away. That is what often happens. But what is that? Why? Well, thank you, my friends, for stopping by. Will you make sure and share this with someone you think would be really encouraged by it? I'd love to hear how you are um, taking in these conversations that I have here. So send me an email or look at what uh, other... um, opportunities to be creative that I have over on my website on www.robinnorgren.com.